Watching the world burn, watching the world burn, October 8th, 2024, let's get into it. Now, <clears throat> I wanted you to know that I'm going to put up a series of videos about weather manipulation. Now, I'm not sure YouTube will allow this video to fly, uh, they censor everything. Uh, so I always encourage you to go to the burn on Rumble, but assuming this goes up, uh, because I actually got a lot of this material from YouTube, so evidently they've approved uh, some of these videos. Uh, but anyway, I did want to tell you, um, now as you watch the, the weather manipulation videos and whether you want to believe in that or not, uh, of course the Canadian preppery came out and says, oh, that's just crap, that's just crap. Well, you form your own opinion, and that's what I always encourage you to do. I want you to watch these videos and say, well, you know, is redacted right, or is, uh, is, is, is weather manipulation uh, actually taking place? Now, I, you know, and the reason why I, I've been up, if I sound punchy, I've been up 24 hours trying to get ready. I, I mean, I am right in the path of a Category 5 hurricane now, you're saying, well, why the hell didn't you get the hell out of town? Well, I'm just outside the evacuation zone, and I want to I wanna defend my house. Okay, I, I do believe there's going to be looting and all kinds. I mean, we've got 20 million illegal aliens in the country, and I don't know how many of them are in my central Florida. So I'm, I'm, I'm going to stay here, and I'm going to defend my house, and I'm going to do what I can to survive. And all my medical supplies are here at the house. If I go up to a freaking hotel somewhere, who knows? I might not even be able to come back to my house. And, and you know, a lot of people, you know, they want to condemn uh, people that, that stay in the way of these hurricanes and everything. Well, you know what? I mean, it comes to a point where you, you have to protect what you've got. And, that, and that's where we are. And so um, uh, let me get into the, the reason that we might not... Uh, the, well, let's just watch the weather manipulation videos right now. Sure. Another question on, on the uh, in the interview with the Los Angeles Times on April 21st, you said that the you told the Associated Press uh, that the American government has created weather tampering techniques so that the new world order will be able to starve millions of Americans and to control the rest. Would you explain what you were trying to say? Well, it, it, what I was trying to say is exactly what I said. There is weather control techniques. We have a complete package on that, which I did not bring, but I certainly will see to it that it is brought in for the record. Number one, the entire patents on the equipment. Number two, Senator Claiborne Pell's complete statement and story of his own that not only does it exist, that we even utilize it as far back as the Vietnam War. You might want to touch base That's with right, Senator but Pell. I, I just want to repeat Speaking. before so, turn to So yes, yeah, so but we do have all that information. The, you're saying the government has created weather tampering techniques so that the quote, new world order will be able to starve millions of Americans. Worldwide. To, millions of Americans and to control the rest. Yes, sir. And that's my belief. As bizarre as that sounds, when if somebody had told me that that equipment even existed 10 years ago, I would have thought they were nuts, sir. And at this point in time, we have all the documents to prove it. And if you think that 85 tornadoes takes place in the middle of our growing area by simultaneous accident, I'm, I'm sorry. With the equipment that's already set up internationally, and as bizarre as that is, it is proven and documented. We will supply you with those documents. As bizarre as that is, I would say that weather wars, and this is uh, quoting actually Senator Claiborne Pell himself, that they are the greatest weapon ever created in the world, and that's the senator's own statement. So, yes, I do stand on that. Thank you, Mr. Fletcher. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Another example is the array of technologies, often referred to collectively as geoengineering that potentially could help reverse the warming effects of global climate change. One that has gained my personal attention is stratospheric aerosol injection, or SAI, a method of seeding the stratosphere with particles that can help reflect the sun's heat in much the same way that volcanic eruptions do. An SAI program could limit global temperature increases, 
reducing some risks associated with higher temperatures and providing the world economy additional time to transition from fossil fuels. This process is also relatively inexpensive. The National Research Council estimates that a fully deployed SAI program would cost about $10 billion yearly. As promising as it may be, moving forward on SAI would also raise a number of challenges for our government and for the international community. On the technical side, greenhouse gas emission reductions would still have to accompany SAI to address other climate change effects, such as ocean acidification, because SAI alone would not remove greenhouse gases from the atmosphere. On the geopolitical side, the technology's potential to alter weather patterns and benefit certain regions of the world at the expense of other regions could trigger sharp opposition by some nations. Others might seize on SAI's benefits and back away from their commitment to carbon dioxide reductions. And as with other breakthrough technologies, global norms and standards are lacking to guide the deployment and implementation of SAI and other. All right, so you watched all of that. Now, an argument against that theory is that SETCOM has a major base in uh, Tampa. Now, I, I printed this off, and man, I tell you, it's little print. <laughs> That's why my glasses are on. <laughs> and, uh, and so, and this is what CENTCOM in Tampa, because, I mean, I'm telling you, this, this CENTCOM base, it's going to get wiped out. So if the government was manipulating the weather, why would they want to wipe out one of their major installations in Florida that, and, and, and okay, so let's, let's read their mission their lines of effort. Iran's malign activity is one of the main challenges we face in the central region. For more than 40 years, the Iranian regime has funded aggressively supported terrorism and terrorist organizations. Now, whether you believe with that or not, that's up to you. Uh, our mission is to deter Iran and its proxies from continuing malign activities and to stabilize not only the region, but global security and commerce as well. And now I'm going to go to the next category, because uh, there's, there's a lot more they have on Iran. While ISIS terrorist territorial uh, caliphate is defeated, they remain a trans, transnational threat. Their desire to regenerate and conduct external ops threatens the United States homeland and those of our partners and allies. Well, you know, okay. You imported 30 million illegal aliens <laughs> or 50 million illegal aliens. <laughs> if you actually believe this shit, I mean, why the hell would you do something like that? But I'm just reading it. Now, that this base, this base is going to get wiped out. I mean, when this category five, so, so these are the, these are the guys writing all this. I mean, I, these are the dumbest, stupidest people on the planet that I've ever seen. Uh, let's, let's keep going. Our goal is to continue developing and enabling Iraqi security forces and our partnered Syrian Democrat forces so that they can contain and defeat ISIS without external assistance. You think them bases in Syria and Iraq are going to survive once, uh, once the uh, uh, Iranians launch? Oh, hell no. Every American on those bases is going to be dead. I, let's just, I, I, okay, I, I, you know, I, I just, reading this stupidity is beyond, uh, okay, all right, never mind, all right, I keep, I keep wanting to interject my, uh, my, my stuff, request assistance to improve security conditions in the IDP camps to counter ISIS influence among inhabitants. There is no military solution to the IDP camps. IDP camp problem addressing the issue requires cooperation among diplomatic security and humanitarian organizations as well as a solution supported and, and and then of course let's get into the complete strategically the central region provides key terrain and a dormant dominant position for the United States to, 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 to strategically god dang it a complete, like I told you, I'm, I'm 24 hours into this. I mean, you know, uh, compete with China and Russia through a range of security cooperation ventures, including border security. What, you know, how, how come we can't secure our border? You idiots in the Pentagon. 
How come we can't secure our border? We, we're going to secure everybody else's border. We're going to give money to Lebanon. We're going to give money to Israel. We're sending 2,000 pound bombs over to Israel like they're candy. We can't secure our border. All right. So uh, anyway, and you know, I could go on from there. Regional constructs. We cannot contend with the complex and interconnected challenges alone. Mutually beneficial partnerships and alliance architecture are our greatest strategic advantage. They are the center of gravity in our national strategy. <laughs> what a... I, I can't even read this bullshit. So anyway, uh, let's get to... Uh, there's, there's a video by Rand Paul uh, talking about Fachi, and this will probably uh, ban the, my video from YouTube, but maybe not because I, I don't even know where I found this video. Let's watch that. Gain of function research was going on in that lab and NIH funded it. Remember when Senator Rand Paul accused Anthony Fauci of funding China's Wuhan virus lab? I totally resent the lie that you are now propagating. The media immediately criticized Senator Paul. Rand Paul, stop it. You look like an idiot. Dr. Anthony Fauci blasting Senator Rand Paul. Senator Paul, you do not know what you are talking about. Anthony Fauci once again forced to call Rand Paul a sniveling moron. <laughs> but some now have changed. Major shift. NIH admits funding risky research in Wuhan. Paul might have been on to something. To me, it's not so much about them admitting or apologizing. It's really about trying to prevent this from happening again in the future. Paul also pushed the then controversial idea that COVID began with a lab leak. All you, the evidence is pointing that it came from the lab, you, and there will be responsibility for those who funded the right. lab, including yourself. Did COVID leak from this lab, which did experiments funded by the U.S. government? The media told us, no, COVID came from an animal. The working theory is someone butchered a bat came into contact with its blood or urine, and then touched his or her nose or mouth. Everybody was saying, came from animals, from bats. I initially was there too. Then there became reports of 80,000 animals being tested, no animals with it. No animals with COVID, but. We know that three people in the Wuhan lab got sick with a virus of unknown origin in November of 2019. And that was more than a thousand kilometers away from where bats live. Exactly. Not only that, lab leaks are common. Accidents do happen. Labs in Singapore, Taiwan, and China accidentally infected themselves with SARS. SARS escaped from labs. So did smallpox, anthrax, and flu. Now the FBI and others agree with Senator Paul. The Department of Energy has concluded COVID-19 likely came from a lab leak in China. So evil Chinese scientists in a lab funded by America? Uh, America funded it, and I think it was uh, maybe not done with evil intentions, it was done with misguided notion that gain-of-function research was safe. Gain-of-function research? That can mean making viruses stronger. They sometimes create viruses that don't exist in nature that are now more infectious. They've gained the function of lethality or infectiousness by com being combined in a lab. They're trying to find ways to stop Right. Diseases. But many scientists have now looked at this and said, we've been doing this gain-of-function research for quite a while. The likelihood that you create something that creates a vaccine that's going to help anybody is pretty slim to none. The media is weirdly uncurious about this. We have a disease that killed maybe 16 million people worldwide, about a million people in America, and they're not curious as to how we got it. You're trying to obscure responsibility for four million people dying around the okay. world from a pandemic. Senator Paul details his arguments in this new book, Deception, the Great COVID Cover-Up. It points out that Fauci once justified the risks of gain-of-function research. He said in 2012, even if a pandemic occurs, if a scientist becomes infected and the community becomes infected, the knowledge is worth it. Well, that's a judgment call, and I would say there's probably 16 million families around the world who might disagree with that now. Dr. Fauci didn't give your money directly to the Chinese lab. He gave it to a nonprofit called EcoHealth. EcoHealth Alliance is working on the ground to stand between you and the next pandemic. EcoHealth Alliance. Most Americans haven't heard of it. They were able to uh, accumulate maybe over $100 million in U.S. taxpayer dollars, and a lot of it was funneled to Wuhan. EcoHealth is run by zoologist Peter Dazak. Set our sights on the next pandemic. We can stop it emerging, 
We can save lives. Before the pandemic, Dayzak bragged about combining coronaviruses in Wuhan in hopes of creating a vaccine. My colleagues in China did the work. You create pseudoparticles, you, look, you insert the spike proteins from those viruses, see if they bind to human cells. And each step of this, you move closer and closer to this virus could really become pathogenic in people. The spread of a new deadly disease. Once COVID broke out, Dayzak was less eager to talk about the experiments he funded. Peter Dayzak has refused to reveal his communications with the Wuhan lab. And I do think that uh, ultimately there is a great deal of culpability on his part. In addition, Dayzak and Fauci got other scientists to sign this letter, published in a prestigious medical journal, saying they strongly condemn conspiracy theories suggesting that COVID-19 does not have a natural origin. They squelched all dissent and said you're a conspiracy theorist if you're saying this but they didn't reveal that they had a monetary self-incentive to cover this up. We asked Dayzak to answer the claims in this video. He didn't respond. To give you an example of who he is and how the money changes hand, this is a guy who has $15,000 cocktail parties at the Cosmo Club in DC, invites Anthony Fauci and others there for cocktails. They're really criticizing science because I represent science. I okay, so that was that video and uh, uh, anything else I got, I'm just going to tack on to the end of this. And uh, But I did want to tell you, um, uh, I, was, I was putting up to George Galloway, and I've been putting comments out. You know, I'm right in the path. I'm, I'm sheltering at home. I'm going to cover the hurricane every second, every minute. Uh, I'm going to be putting up videos as fast as I can. Uh, I put up the emergency video. Uh, so follow me on X at that cybersec guy. I am The Burn on Rumble. Of course, I'm That Cybersecurity Guy on YouTube. And then, of course, I'm That Cybersec Guy on Odyssey. And uh, you can follow me anywhere. I mean, I also on Parler, okay? Uh, so I think it's, it's That Cybersec Guy on Parler. And, of course, I'm on Truth Social. So, I mean, you can follow me everywhere, all right? So I'm going to be posting until my Internet goes down. I mean, you have to understand... We will lose power uh, for about three days. So I probably will be without internet for about three days. But at the same time, and my phones are fully charged. I'm going to get out. I'll film. I'll film. I, I don't want what happened in North Carolina to happen to Florida. Okay. I want to make sure that you know what happens here. I do feel we're going to have black helicopters flying over. I do feel we're going to have looting. I do feel that the devastation is going to be beyond belief. And assuming that I survive, I'm going to document everything. And I will be posting videos about everything so that you, the American people, know what the hell takes place in Florida. Peace out. Stay free. Today I would like to share with you what the global media is hiding. How the Ukrainian government cancelled the Ukrainian constitution and killed witnesses. Zelensky is wrangling his power from the grasp of the Ukrainian law. One theory suggests he decided to stop holding elections as soon as he assumed the presidency. In 2019, he dissolved the parliament and reassembled it, with only his supporters and his deputies receiving mandates this time. Billions of dollars have been embezzled in Ukraine, and the ones responsible are the team of Zelensky's appointees, by the way. In 2021, he decided to remove the chairman of the Constitutional Court of Ukraine from his post. There were no legal grounds for that, so he simply sent armed men to prevent the chairman from entering the building. The Constitutional Court is the only authority tasked with upholding the fundamental law of the country. Zelensky cancelled the elections, as we all know. He declared that the Constitution is on pause in Ukraine. All those rights guaranteed by the Constitution of Ukraine for us, as, as representatives of our state, are currently on pause. Constitution is the supreme law of Ukraine. It is the Constitutional Court that is qualified to determine whether Zelensky is holding the presidential office legally. Judge Tupitsky, chairman of the Constitutional Court, a respected lawyer, challenged President Zelensky's decision in the Supreme Court and won.
In 2023, the Supreme Court of Ukraine held that barring the chairman of the Constitutional Court from his workplace was an abuse of authority by Zelensky, which can be seen as usurpation of power. Again, the Supreme Court found Zelensky guilty. One doesn't simply remove the chairman of the Constitutional Court from his post. Zelensky appealed the decision and in 2023, the Supreme Court dismissed it and upheld its previous ruling. So Zelensky lost all the lawsuits in the Supreme Court and had to restore Topitsky as the chairman of the Constitutional Court. But then something unexpected happened. Topitsky was poisoned in Vienna. A Supreme Court judge was killed by a drone. Both events within a week. Topitsky is currently in hospital in Vienna under the protection of the Austrian law enforcement. The medical tests show that mercury levels in his blood were 10 times above normal. The chairman of the Constitutional Court and the Supreme Court followed the law and went against Zelensky, who violated the law. The chairman of the Constitutional Court was poisoned. The Supreme Court judge was killed in a drone attack. In this case, the Ukrainian court ruled that Zelensky was abusing his power, which can be interpreted as usurpation of power. Friends, this is terrifying, and we must speak up about it. Whether you like it or not, this case holds the answer to the question of Zelensky's legitimacy. That's why he's afraid. To build a democratic and prosperous Ukraine, we need the law not Zelensky's word. They arrest or kill everyone who dares to resist. They want to jail me for life. The priests who defended the church are behind bars. Tupitsky was poisoned. Share this video with others. We want to live in a country where the authorities don't kill anyone who disagrees.